My name is Olivia and welcome to the Photography Class Spotlight. Today we will be going over how to prepare your photo for judging, the photography write-up, and what judges will be looking for in your photography project. Let's get started. First, let's talk about what judges will be looking for in your photography projects. This is an example of what your photography judge will be using to critique your project. First, having a well-defined goal is great for ensuring your growth as a 4 -H'er. Your judge will also be looking to see what level of technical abilities you have displayed through your photo. Were you able to focus on your object or is the photo slightly blurry? Does your photo have proper lighting? Etc. Your judge will also be looking at the impact of the photo and the technique and creativity used in capturing your image. The composition, layout, and display of your photo will all also be judged. Keep these things in mind when taking your photo. Now let's learn how to prepare your photo for static judging day. The first step is to print your photo. This can be done at many local drugstores or Walmart. For a single photo, I recommend printing your photo as a 5x7 or an 8x10 to fit the parameters that are stated in the fair book. Your picture can be printed vertical or horizontal and can be printed in black and white or color. The next step to preparing your photo is deciding whether you're going to mat or mount your photo. The difference is that matting includes a frame that is set on top of your photo like this picture of a bee on a flower. Mounting, on the other hand, just requires you to adhere your photo to a piece of mounting paper, as seen with this photo here. To help you decide which method to use, take a frame and set it on top of your photo. Now take it off. Go back and forth between frame and no frame to decide which one better suits your photo. First, we will go over how to mount your photo. To mount your photo, these are the materials you will need. First, your photo. I'll be using this picture of a cornstalk leaf. Next, some mounting board, a ruler, a paper slicer or some scissors, double-sided tape or some rubber cement. I'll be using double-sided tape today. And finally, foam board, which is completely optional, but it will give your photo a little extra thickness and protection. The first step is to select the color of your mounting board. You want to try to stay away from bright colored mounting board as this takes away from your photo and usually just drowns out the colors. We want the focus of your mount to be the photo that you took. So usually staying away from bright colors is a good idea. Instead, opt for a more neutral color, such as a black, white, or even in some cases a brown might work. So to select your mounting board, go in between the two colors and see which one complements your photo best. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between putting my photo on the black mounting paper and putting it on the white. And I think the black mounting paper complements my photo best, so that's what I'm going to go with. The next step is to cut your mounting board, which I have already done. The borders of the mounting board should extend about two inches beyond the edge of your photo. So for this six by eight photo, I cut my mounting board to a 10 inch by 12 inch piece. I recommend using a paper slicer to get straight edges, but if you don't have it, cutting a straight line with scissors works as well. Once your mounting board is cut to the correct size, it is now time to adhere your photo to the mounting board. So the first step to adhering is making sure that your photo is centered. This is where your ruler comes in handy. You can use your ruler to make sure that your photo is centered on all four sides. So I'm gonna do that quickly. Okay, so my photo is pretty centered right now. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to carefully turn it over and I'm just using my finger to mark where this corner is that I flipped so that it kind of stays in the same place. Then I'm going to take my double-sided tape. I'm just gonna put one piece in each corner. Now you're just going to flip 
flip that photo back over. Make sure again that it is centered. And you're going to carefully press and just make sure that it's nice and secure to your mounting board being careful not to get any fingerprints or smudges on your photos. Now at this time, if you have chosen to put your photo on top of some foam board, this is when you would cut your foam board to the same dimensions as your mounting board. And then you would just secure your mounted photo using the same methods to your foam board. Now you have successfully mounted your photo. Now we will go over how to mount a photo. These are the supplies that you will need. First, your photo. I'll be using this picture of a landscape with a sunset. Some mounting or foam board. I'll be using a piece of foam board today. Some paper frames. You can find these at Hobby Lobby or any other craft store. A paper slicer or some scissors. Again, I recommend a paper slicer to get some cleaner lines. Next is tape. Any type of tape will work. I'm using masking tape today, but a regular scotch tape or even a painter's tape works as well. And lastly, some double-sided tape or rubber cement. Again, I'll be using double-sided tape. Just like mounting a photo, the first step is to select the color of frame. Just like with your mounting board, I recommend sticking to either white or black. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, testing out both frames and I think the black frame complements my photo the best so that is what I'm going to go with. So the next step is to attach your picture to its frame. To do this you're going to place your frame face down and then you're going to take your photo also face down right on top of the frame and you're going to center it as best you can. Okay so that looks pretty good to me. Then you're going to take your regular tape, masking tape, scotch tape, whatever type of tape you're using, and you're going to put a piece of tape in each corner. All right, and this step does not by any means have to be pretty. It's just to secure your photo to the frame so that it doesn't shift and move while we're securing your photo to the mounting board later. So next you're gonna flip it over and just make sure that everything looks good. If it looks a little crooked or a little off-centered, you can always flip it back around, carefully undo the tape and resituate your picture until you are satisfied with how it looks. But I think this looks pretty good. To seal everything in, you want to attach your frame picture to a piece of foam or a piece of mounting board. To do this, you're going to want to cut your board to the same size as your framed photo, so the same size as the outside of the frame. It is also recommended to select the same color of mounting board or foam board as the color of your frame. Now mine are two different colors. It's not the end of the world, but it looks better if it's all cohesive. So I am going to place my foam board or mounting board, whatever you're using, on the table and then flip your framed photo upside down and then you're going to take your double-sided tape or rubber cement and I'm going to place four pieces on the corners of the frame. So now you're going to flip that framed photo back over and place it on your matching or foam board, placing it down and just carefully making sure that everything is centered and then press down to secure it. You now have successfully matted your photo. Now that you have successfully prepared your photo to be judged, let's go over the photography exhibit label. Similar to other project area write-ups, your photography exhibit label will ask questions about the process of capturing the moment or object in your photo. Let's fill one out together. Before you start filling out your exhibit label, make sure you have your photo with you. I'll be using this photo of a pig and also the camera you used. For this photo, I just used my iPhone, so that's what I will be going off of. But if you have a camera, it's handy to have the camera and the lens you use to take your photo with you while you are filling out your label. So the first step is to fill out the personal information on the top. 
So you're going to fill out your name, your county, your 4-H club, and your grade. Now you're going to fill out how many years you've completed a photography project. If this is your first year entering a photography project into the fair, you will write a 1. If this is your third year participating in the photography project, you will write a 3, which is what I'm going to do. Next, you're going to write the date that the photo was taken. I took this photo on June 13th, so that is what I wrote down. Just a reminder that your photo has to have been taken between last year's fair and the time that you're filling out this exhibit label. Next, you're going to write down where your photo was taken. My photo was taken on my farm, so that is what I'm going to write down. This next part is when your photo really comes in handy. The next question is, what did you plan to learn or do? Or, what was your photography goal? The goal for this photo was to capture a moment in agriculture, so that is what I'm going to write down. The next question is, what did you do? Explain what steps you took to take your photo. Some of you may have gone out and searched for something, or others of you, like I did, came upon a perfect photo taking opportunity. So I was taking out watermelon rinds to the sows on my farm and saw this particular sow peeking her nose over the concrete wall. I thought that it would make for a really unique and cool photo so I decided to take out my phone and snap a picture, and this is what I got. So I'm going to write down exactly what I just told you onto my exhibit label. This next section is where having the camera you use to take your picture with you comes in handy. This next section is to tell us about the camera that you used. I used my iPhone, so I'm going to check the box that says phone slash tablet. The model or brand of my phone was an iPhone XS. So I'm going to write it there. Next, it is going to ask you what type of lens you used. For my photo, I just used the back-facing camera on my iPhone and used it at the 1x zoom, so that is exactly what I'm going to write. The next section is just asking if you added any edits or any filters to your photo. So for my photo, I wanted to make the colors a little more vibrant. So I went to the photo settings on my phone and I added a filter to the photo called Vivid. This made the colors look exactly how I wanted to. So I'm going to document that at this question here. Next step just talks about the matting or mounting of your photo. So who selected the matting or mounting? I did. I decided to mount it because I thought that putting the frame on top just took a little too much away from the photo. So I'm going to write exactly that down on my exhibit label. Next, who matted or mounted the photo? I did. The next two questions are asking about what you learned and what story the photo tells. So what was something that I learned while taking this picture? Well, while taking this photo, I learned that sometimes to get the picture just right, you have to experiment with different angles and filters to get the right mix to get the look you want. So that's what I'm going to write down. And the final question for your exhibit label is asking what story the photo tells. How does the photo make you feel? Well, in my photo, you can see a little piece of the watermelon peeking out. 
So to me, the story that this photo tells is that the pig is really excited about the watermelon. This photo makes me feel fun and energetic and reminds me of summer. So that is exactly what I'm going to write. Now that you've completed your photography exhibit label, the final step in preparing your photo for judging is to attach the exhibit label to the back of your photo. You just do this so that your exhibit label doesn't get lost and separated from your photo. If your photo is large enough that you can place your exhibit label on the back without it peeking out from the front, you can just tape it on just like this. If you have a smaller photo, like I do, you can fold up your exhibit label, flip over your photo, just use a piece of tape, tape it right on to the back of your photo. Now flip it over to the front and make just make sure that label isn't peeking out from behind. And that is it. Your photo is ready for Static Judging Day. Thank you for tuning in to the Photography Class Spotlight. Hopefully this video provided you with a little extra information. We can't wait to see what moments you capture.